Hello, everybody. First off, thanks for those who have subscribed to the channel and uh, staying tuned to my content. I really appreciate that. <sighs> Anyways, I've been wanting to talk about this for quite some time. As you all are aware, James Gunn has pretty much moved on from the original Justice League cast. Henry Cavill is no longer going to be Superman. Ben Affleck's no longer going to be Batman. Gal Gadot's no longer going to be Wonder Woman. Ezra Miller's no longer going to be The Flash. Uh, Jason Momoa is no longer going to be Aquaman, although he could be Lobo, but who knows? Ray Fisher is no longer Cyborg. However, John Cena is still going to be Peacemaker, and Viola Davis is still going to be uh, Amanda Waller, which is good because they both play their parts very well. Um. However, I would like to see these two actors, who I think have portrayed the roles of Billy Batson slash Captain Marvel, very well on the big screen. And I think, you know, the movies, in a lot of ways, have done those characters justice, have done their side, their universe, their mythology very well. And I think they should be given a, a third movie, even though they're both movies didn't do great at the box office. And to me, it's more so of DC's uh, bad marketing and advertising than anything else, than the movies, than the movies themselves. And I'm talking about Asher Angel and Zachary Levi. I think Zachary Levi and Asher Angel have done an overall very good job portraying the roles of Billy Batson and Captain Marvel. Um, I think they've done the characters very well, especially Zachary Levi. Granted, I do agree with a lot of people that at times he portrays Captain Marvel a bit too immaturely and too childish, where he's supposed to be more serious more uh, mature, more level-headed than goofy and man-childish. That's the proper term to use. Uh, for those who don't know who are too f who are not familiar with the characters of Billy Batson slash Captain Marvel, uh, they've been around since 1940 in Wiz Comics Volume 1, Issue Number 2. They were created by comic legends Bill Parker and C.C. Beck, and they were originally published by Fawcett Comics. And during the 1940s, he was the most popular superhero in the, on the world, outselling even Superman at the time. However, in the 1950s, National Comics, which was DC Comics at the time, mm -hmm. took Fawcett Comics to court and sued them, feeling that Captain Marvel was a really ripoff of Superman. And unfortunately, National Comics won the case, and for nearly two decades, and for over two decades, Captain Marvel was no longer seen in the comics until 1973 when DC brought him back in the series called Shazam. Now, the character was then brought back, was then officially part of the DC Universe in the 1990s, uh, when Jerry Ordway published uh, a post-crisis introduction called, did his introduction to the character, well, gave us his official post-crisis origin in the graphic novel The Power of Shazam, which in my opinion was fantastic. I've read and I thought it was easily one of the best or one of the best revitalizations and origins of any comic book character that I've seen in recent years. To me, I think as much as I love the Shazam movie, the first one, well, I really liked both of them, but more so the first one from 2019. I understand the new, the 2019 Shazam movie incorporated a lot of elements from the new 52, but to me, if they were to incorporate elements more from the Power of Shazam graphic novel that was created by Jerry Ordway in the late 1980s, early 1990s, I think the movie... I think it would have been better, but that's just me. But I still say that the first Shazam movie from 2019 is in a lot of ways a borderline masterpiece. I, I, I really feel that way. I, I really feel that way about the film. Um, but, and anyway, he's been officially part of the DC Comics. DC Comics officially purchased the rights in the early to mid-1990s. And, and when DC launched its new 52 in 2011, they renamed the character Shazam in 2012. And... In, in Jeff John's uh, Justice, Justice League title. Now, if you want to know my thoughts on the name change, I thought it was stupid. I had no issues calling him Captain Marvel. As a matter of fact, he was the first superhero to go by the name of Captain Marvel. But, um, it is what it is. But, yeah, I think Asher Angel and Billy Batson deserve a shot to shine in James Gunn's DC Cinematic Universe. Yeah. <sighs> so. 
I really honestly believe that um, Zachary Levar would do well. I think he would be given better material to work with. I'm not saying David Samer gave him awful material. That is not true. But I definitely do think James Gunn, who's going to try to be more faithful to the source material than what the original heads of Warner Brothers were when they did their run of the DC Cinematic Universe, especially with Zack Snyder and Christopher Nolan, I think James Gunn's going to be more faithful to the source material. And I think we're going to hopefully... Uh, see Captain Marvel fight Black Adam on the big screen, who will most likely no longer be portrayed by Dwayne Johnson. Which, to be honest with you, uh, I did mind Dwayne Johnson as Black Adam, but I think they could have gotten somebody different and somebody better to play the role. I was interested in his take. I didn't hate the Black Adam movie like a lot of people did. But, you know, he was better off in the first Shazam movie as the main villain, even though I did like... Mark Strong's Dr. Savannah. I thought he was a very good villain. But, uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And also, post your thoughts. Do you think Ash Ranger and Zachary Levi should be given a shot at James Gunn's DC Cinematic Universe? Let me know in the comments down below. Peace out.